Welcome everyone to another episode of Cellular Wisdom, where we dissect health myths. I'm Ethan Foster, your friendly neighborhood observer of all things human and occasionally perplexing. Today we're diving into the world of flame retardants lurking in your couch cushions and children's car seats. Sounds cozy, right? Comfy and toxic. The ultimate couch potato scenario. And I'm Alara Sky, the sharp mind with an even sharper tongue, here to help you laugh your way to a healthier life. According to Dr. Mercola's analysis, prenatal exposure to certain flame retardants can pose serious risks to your child's cognitive and physical development. Basically, while you're fluffing that cushion, there might be chemicals nibbling at your well-being. I know. Who would have thought your sofa could be part of a covert operation targeting your child's future math scores? There's a lot to unpack here, so let's jump right into these chemicals and how they might be putting our kids in the slow lane. Specifically, we're talking about polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs. They're used in a ton of household items because they're great at slowing the spread of flames. Not so great is how they manage to slow down your child's brain development. Remember the old line, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen? Well, PBDEs seem to say, if you can't stand the heat, fill the entire house with toxins that might hamper your kid's motor skills. It's not exactly an ideal solution. I like how we keep inventing solutions that solve one problem and spawn about five others. It's like whack-a-mole on a global scale. So these PBDEs accumulate in our environment, in our bodies, and apparently in our unborn children. That's a horrifying version of hand-me-downs, if you ask me. Yes, the worst maternal gift, have a stuffed animal for your crib, plus a side of toxins that might lower your cognitive abilities. Studies mentioned by Dr. Merkula highlight how children up to the age of six can have lower mental and physical development when exposed in utero. It's reminiscent of that stealth friend who quietly sips your coffee when you're not looking, except this one's sipping away at your child's potential. So basically, PBDEs cross the placental barrier, they accumulate in fatty tissue, and they monkey around with hormone regulation and brain development. If that isn't enough to make you rethink your living room set, I don't know what will. Or your electronics, or your mattress, or basically everything that's built to resist a spark. What's especially surprising is that in places like Lower Manhattan, they measured PBDE levels in cord blood, which correlated with significant developmental delays. We love to talk about the hustle and bustle of Manhattan, but apparently, the hustle includes passing along flame retardants to babies. We can't forget that PBDEs aren't just about the kids. They can affect the entire hormonal landscape of the body. PBDEs disrupt the endocrine system, especially messing with the thyroid. And the thyroid is that silent overachiever in your body. It's basically in charge of energy, metabolism, and a million other essential tasks we rarely appreciate until something goes wrong. They're definitely endocrine ninjas. They slip in, they mimic or block hormones, and they alter your gut microbiome. Once your gut flora is off balance, you get that domino effect metabolic disorders, neurodevelopmental issues, and a host of other joys that cost more than a new sofa. The gut-brain axis is definitely a star in this conversation. We used to think the gut was just that place we stuffed with pizzas and regretted it later. Now we know it's basically mission control for mood, immunity, and even how your brain grows and functions. A jolt to that system can lead to everything from anxiety to insulin resistance, or in simpler terms, from the pizza regret to a lifetime of health challenges. Fortunately, it's not all doom and gloom. Dr. Mercola shared some good news, Lamosa lactobacillus reuteri, or LR for short. This probiotic can help counter the negative effects of PBDE exposure. Thank goodness we discovered that. If I didn't have good bacteria on my side, I'd probably never sit on my sofa again. I thought LR was some fancy new brand for high-end yoga pants, but apparently it's a microbe, and a helpful one at that. So how does it work exactly? Is it wearing tiny superhero capes, fending off PBDE molecules with a microscopic shield? Close enough. In more scientific terms, LR helps maintain a healthy gut microbiome, which reduces inflammation, supports hormone balance, and keeps PBDE-induced disruptions to a minimum. There was a study published in Archives of Toxicology focusing on maternal supplementation of LR to see if it protected offspring from PBDE's unpleasant effects. It's basically the probiotic cavalry riding in on white cells. Let me guess. They gave mother mice a flame retardant cocktail and then introduced some LR to see what happened to the baby mice. And presumably, we're looking at improvements, right? Yep. They tested pregnant mice exposed to PBDEs. The group that got LR had offspring showing fewer growth delays, fewer endocrine troubles, and lower hyperactivity behaviors. Interestingly, female offspring seemed to benefit even more. They had less hyperactivity, less tooth eruption delay, and a more balanced metabolism. So, if you happen to be a female mouse, Lamosa lactobacillus reuteri is basically your superhero. Wait, so these female mice avoided that frenetic scurrying around we often see in rodents? If LR can keep female mice from frantic digging, maybe it can also help me not panic when I see my credit card bill. While I can't vouch for the credit card anxiety, I can say that LR's impact on glucose tolerance and insulin balance in the mice is a big deal. We're talking about a better handle on blood sugar, 
which is crucial if you want to avoid the dreaded metabolic meltdown. PBDE exposure tends to wreak havoc on metabolic markers, and LR helps mitigate that. And we should emphasize the difference between male and female offspring. The study found that female mice were especially vulnerable to the behavioral aspects of PBDE exposure, or perhaps they displayed them differently. But with LR supplementation, the female offspring showed remarkable resilience. Maybe the secret is that LR is a strong ally in the fight against these pollutants. It absolutely is. It also underscores that these endocrine disruptors don't affect everyone in exactly the same way. There can be sex-specific vulnerabilities and complexities in how toxins alter our biology, but the take-home message is that a strong, balanced gut microbiome can offer a significant shield against PBDE-induced damage. So that's the probiotic angle. Now, let's talk about the avoid the flame retardants in the first place angle. Because if you're living in a swamp, you could try to avoid alligators or just get out of the swamp. The best solution might be prevention. Absolutely. Dr. Mercola suggests shopping smart. Look for labels that say no added flame retardants. That might mean opting for more natural materials like wool, organic cotton, or even leather. And if you see something referencing California's TB117 flammability standard, that's usually a clue it has flame retardants. So keep your eyes peeled. That's a good tip for parents too. Car seats are prime suspects for these chemicals. Of course, we don't want to set the baby's seat on fire. So it's about finding products that meet safety standards without relying on PBDEs. It's crazy to think that something designed for safety could be a Trojan horse for toxins. But that's how a lot of modern safety measures went. You want to solve one glaring issue, so you develop a chemical fix, only to find out it's basically trading one danger for another. Another tip is to avoid polyurethane foam products. If your couch feels like it's made from a giant foam pit, it's probably loaded with who knows what. And once these chemicals slough off, they wind up in household dust. So vacuum regularly with a HEPA filter, wet mop your floors, and wipe surfaces with a damp cloth. It's all about not letting that dust accumulate. Flame retardant dust bunnies are the least huggable of all dust bunnies. Cleaning is definitely more fun when you imagine you're vacuuming up invisible toxins. It adds a certain heroic flair to an otherwise mundane chore. Now, aside from avoiding PBDEs, how can we protect ourselves from the damage if we've already had some exposure? Dr. Mercola emphasizes gut health as a frontline defense. The logic is that a balanced microbiome and well-functioning mitochondria help your cells handle toxins more effectively. If your body can't generate enough energy to keep oxygen levels in the colon low, you risk fostering an environment where beneficial anaerobic microbes can't thrive. Precisely. We're tackling a two-pronged challenge here. First, we have to stop exposing ourselves to as many toxins, like LA, linoleic acid, from seed oils, electromagnetic fields, and of course, PBDEs. Second, we need to help beneficial bacteria flourish by making sure our mitochondria are up to the task of maintaining that gut environment. Let's talk about diet. I heard Dr. Mercola mention that once you've reduced your exposure to mitochondrial busters like seed oils, you can start introducing healthy carbs in a strategic way. There's mention of white rice, whole fruits, and eventually other fiber sources, but only after the gut has had some time to heal. Yes, the trick is not to go from zero to kale smoothie mania overnight, because if your gut is compromised, piling on fiber can increase endotoxins and worsen inflammation. So you start gently, small, easily digestible carbohydrates, maybe even something like dextrose water for a week or two, sipped slowly. Then introduce more variety as your gut stabilizes. So you basically woo your gut microbes back into a stable relationship. Don't bombard them with too many demands. Give them a mild environment first, and then gradually add complexity. It's like reintroducing houseplants into your living room, one at a time, instead of turning your house into a greenhouse overnight. That is a surprisingly apt analogy. Then there's the star bacterium, Ackermansia mucinifila. Many people have next to none of it, but it's essential for a balanced microbiome. According to Mercola, you want to get rid of seed oils for at least six months before you even start your Ackermansia supplementation plan. Otherwise, you're basically planting delicate orchids in a barren desert. So you work on cleaning up your diet, removing LA, letting your mitochondria recover, and then you bring in acromantia. Also, you want to be strategic about how you ingest probiotics, right? There's a recommended timing for maximum effect. Yes. Dr. Mercola suggests taking probiotics on an empty stomach, ideally in the morning after an overnight fast. That's because if you take them with a full meal, the transit time in your gut can stretch to eight hours, possibly dooming many of the bacteria before they reach the colon. On an empty stomach, they're more likely to get to where they need to go in a couple of hours. Fascinating. It's like giving the microbes VIP access, skipping the long lines at the entrance. If you toss them in with a big lunch, they have to navigate the cafeteria crowd, and by the time they get to the colon, half of them have thrown in the towel. Exactly. Probiotic bottle service. And in addition to these gut strategies, Dr. Mercola also brought up the idea of using natural progesterone. 
This is because PBDEs can mimic estrogen and disrupt hormones, so progesterone can counterbalance some of that estrogenic effect. It's like a seesaw. Too much estrogenic activity can cause imbalance, and progesterone helps level it out. So, is progesterone recommended for everyone, or just certain people who might be low? Because whenever I hear hormones, I picture complicated lab tests and an entire array of disclaimers. But I also understand we're focusing on the synergy between diet, lifestyle, and hormone supplementation. According to Dr. Mercola, progesterone is one of a handful of hormones he believes many adults can benefit from, the others being T3, DHEA, and pregnenolone. But the big note is that you don't just rely on a hormone supplement alone. You first dial in your diet so your mitochondria are firing on all cylinders. Then you consider progesterone if indicated. Yes, and Mercola specifies an interesting method, using progesterone transmucosally on your gums rather than transdermally. Something about transdermal use converting too much of it into another compound, allopregnanolone, which you can't convert back. If you do it on your gums, you apparently preserve more progesterone in its original form. That's right. The skin is loaded with the 5-alpha reductus enzyme, so you lose a lot of progesterone in that route. Using your gums is more direct and doesn't require dealing with that enzymatic conversion. It's off-label, but evidently effective. And the dose is often around 25 to 50 milligrams, typically half an hour before bedtime, because progesterone has an anti-cortisol effect and can boost GABA, making for better sleep. If you're a menstruating woman, you'd use it during the luteal phase, about 10 days after your period starts, and stop once your period begins. If you're a male or non-menstruating woman, you can do it daily and just take a one-week break every so often. That's the gist. But of course, you'd want to be sure you're a good candidate for progesterone supplementation. The big reveal here is that by restoring hormone balance and supporting your microbiome, you can reduce the negative impacts of PBDEs. It's a multi-layered approach. Avoid the toxins, support your gut, consider strategic supplementation. So the highlight reel for flame retardant toxins goes something like, they're found in your household items. They're a real threat to your child's mental and motor development. And they persist in your environment and body, like an unwanted party guest who just won't leave. Then we have the shining knights, Lamosa lactobacillus reuteri, plus a healthy microbiome, plus potential hormone support with progesterone. Don't forget about the big cleaning spree with a heap of vacuum and damp cloth to banish the dust bunnies of doom and avoiding those suspect foams. I do love the idea of valiantly vacuuming toxins into oblivion. You've got to find joy in the little things. If folks want to get deeper into the nitty gritty, Dr. Mercola apparently covers a lot of it in his new book about cellular health and bioenergetic diet approaches. But the main principle stands. You keep your mitochondria well fueled, your gut well stocked with beneficial bacteria, and you minimize your exposure to flame retardants. By doing so, you're improving your entire family's health trajectory. Exactly. The broad takeaway is that modern life is a minefield of chemicals invented with good intentions. Who doesn't want to avoid burning down the house? But we must weigh benefits against the newly discovered risks to our biology. By layering prevention, smart supplementation, and a targeted diet, you dramatically reduce the damage. It's not about living in fear. It's about living in awareness. And we have the comedic advantage. Whenever we see that flame retardant added label, we can respond with a dry quip, then promptly put the product back on the shelf. After all, a good sense of humor is half the battle in tackling these health challenges. Exactly. Because if we can't laugh at our chemical-laden society, we'll just end up crying into our flame retardant pillows. And that can't be good for anyone's gut microbiome. Well, we've covered a lot of ground. Should we wrap up with a quick recap so people can walk away with a neat highlight reel? Sure thing. Here's the short version. PBDEs are flame retardants in many household items. They can harm your child's development, messing with cognition, motor skills, and endocrine function. They accumulate in the body, crossing the placental barrier. Studies have shown that supplementing with l reuteri can help mitigate these effects, especially protecting against behavioral and metabolic issues in the offspring. Reducing exposure is key. Choose flame retardant-free products, especially for furniture and children's items. Avoid polyurethane foam, clean with HEPA filters, wet mops, and damp cloths. Then, prioritize gut health by removing mitochondrial toxins like seed oils, incorporating healthy carbs strategically, and adding beneficial bacteria like acromancia. Time your probiotics so they actually make it to your colon. Finally, consider natural progesterone, used on the gums, as an antagonist to estrogenic influences from endocrine disruptors. Keep a balanced approach and ensure you're building a strong foundational diet before relying on any supplementation. That's about the gist, right? Yes, that's the whole shebang in a probiotic-filled nutshell. Thanks for tuning in to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We've given you the rundown on the hidden toxins quietly undermining your well-being. Now you can take steps to defend yourself and your family while still enjoying a good night's sleep on a safer mattress, or at least a well-vacuumed couch. Until next time, this is Ethan Foster signing off. May your furniture be free of suspicious foam and your microbiome be brimming with heroic bacteria. And I'm Alara Skye, reminding you that sometimes the best way to protect your home is to investigate what it's made of in the first place. 
Stay healthy, stay curious, and keep that gut happy. We'll catch you on the next episode of Cellular Wisdom, where we dissect health myths with a scalpel and a smile. Bye for now. Take care, everyone, and remember, laughter might be the best medicine, but a good probiotic run is a close second. Cheers.